Shalom, my friends. This is Impact to Impact Ministry. We have been given a mandate of God. God would have asked us to join with Him in sharing the message of hope. You see, the hope that God has given to us is in Christ Jesus. He offers peace eternally. And we, here at Impact to Impact Ministries, are helping other people to escape. We trust God that as you will join in our broadcast, that you will be blessed week after week, or whether it is that you meet us on the mission fields or simply on the streets, preaching this word of God, as we continue to declare hope reborn, Jesus Christ, indeed, hope to all nations. welcome you to a broadcast impact to impact trust that you will be blessed in jesus name we're giving all sinners a brand new start impact to impart we're sending the message you know a person that is held captive can be held captive because of two primary forms one you can be held captive by your own choice you can become a person that have been captured purposefully you you wanted to be that you want to to participate in something that was not proper wasn't right because of that you find yourself entrapped or in prison a person also can be captured or imprisoned by deception you know and the thing that the devil always seem to be so well at is deception this evening as we continue to share concerning deliverance and deliverance is really much needed because we have an adversary that always is seeking every opportunity that he have to hold captive and at ransom every single one of us jesus christ as we have been sharing for the past week have indeed provided for us deliverance we have been purchased by his blood we have been set free by his power by the grace and the work that he had wrought for us in calvary at the cross so today even as we continue to share concerning deliverance from this passing world this age this world that is passing away we need deliverance because I, I know many people would have heard the statement. I would have heard some make this point, position, that I'm going down with the ship. <laughs> you know, and some people, some people have this ironic statement, and I am going down with the ship, even our, our nation. You know, um, we, I remember one of our old Calypsonians had made that, that alludement that if, if this country was a boat, you're going to sail on it, right? And even if it's sinking, you're going down with it. And uh, we want to let you know today, you don't have to go down with this world. This world, this present age, which is lost, is passing away. The word of God in 1 John chapter 2, verse 17 says, And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. This world and all of its loss, all of the, diverse, the diversity of loss that exists in it, it is passing away. But Christ have made available. This day is coming, the day is coming when this world and its works will be burned according to 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10. 
but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up this is the word of God I'm not making up this story you know it's quite interesting that even if we live out our lives they are as really they are vapor a momentary momentary vapor just about a moment our lives as we we would we would consider it our lives is just just a, a passing moment you know in james chapter 4 verse 14 it says for what is your life what is your life it is even as a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away the world is about to perish you know it's quite interesting that even as i'm sharing concerning the passing of this this world you know that you hear it's so much statements about um the ozone la layer is it's 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 becoming thin we hear about the melting of the caps ice caps we hear about you know um all these these things that are talking about about the the, this, the the dying of earth and yet still although men the ones especially the ones especially who pushes the narratives the statements about the reality of the dying of the world are the same ones that are trying to save it and are willing to go down with it and not understand that with this passing the passing away of this present age it is inevitable that one should escape you should escape you know all deliverance have been given christ had made available to us a deliverance we are and can be set free from this world that is dying the world that is perishing we can and have been set free now it only comes deliverance from this evil world may come in the form of our own debt right you may die and in your debt you get to escape and some people say well <laughs> you know that that sounds a little bit mean bishop but the truth is that sometimes your debt is a great opportunity for you to just leave this chaotic world when you die those that die you know as a matter of fact there's a scripture that talks about it in isaiah chapter 57 verse 1. here it says it says the righteous perishes right the righteous perishes and no man takes it to heart merciful men are taken away while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil that is what isaiah chapter 57 verse 1 is saying no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil right he shall enter into peace those that are righteous and die will enter into peace now the same is not true for everybody who dies though because those who are full of his mystery and your sin is full inside of you because the word of god did say if you die in your sin now hell is not for you you know hell is not for you you're not going to be condemned if it is that you take your sins and you give it into christ that's how you get your deliverance give yourself to christ christ is the one that sets you free so you're not going to be a part of the ones that are having peace entering into peace and enter into rest the, 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 um, verse 2 of isaiah 50, 57 says they shall rest in their beds each one walking in his uprightness is isaiah 57 verse 1 and 2 so when the when we think about deliverance from this passing world please note that death also is a means of getting out of here because the more you live the more you have to face and contend with the evil of this age you know eventually it will happen it's going to happen for all because when christ returns all of us is going to escape i've heard some call this lazy christians i've heard some say 
Christians with a escape theology and I am I am one of those that joined with others I've heard um, Pastor John Hagee made this statement I love this statement that he made that if it's escape theology he's in line to escape I'm in line also to escape it is escape theology because the war that is to come and the melting of this world the destruction of the world that God have thus recorded is something that we should be excited about escaping remember there is a judgment in first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 15 the word of God says for this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep those who went on who died already we're not gonna get to run in before them no 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 they're gonna get there first for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with a voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first don't be ignorant about it those who die in Christ Isaiah 57 verse 1 they are going to be raised first Hallelujah for them who have escaped this wretched world already. Amen. But the, the exciting part, it continues. It says that then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus shall we, shall we always be with the Lord. It's an exciting thing. To know that you are going to escape because what is going to happen next on planet earth what is going to happen next the melting the of the ice caps and the ozone layer that they say is getting thin and all oh, they say that the world is disintegrating oh they try to save so much of life and all the diseases but it's quite interesting that although they have all these awareness yet still they don't want to turn to the one that has the power and the rule over it for their deliverance men are trying always constantly to try to deliver themselves from the snare that they have found themselves in but it's not going to work because the one that have held you captive is the master of deception crafty wicked and cunning remember i said at the beginning of this broadcast there are two ways that you can be held captive one by your own choice and two by pure deception whereby you didn't understand what you really were signing up to i don't think that many people understand what they are signing up to when they, I've heard young men talk about what kind of a party they're going to have in hell. I have had recent time to be sharing as I would preach. I, I remember sharing one time in my message that hell would not even have current. You know, because the word of God talk about there's no, there's no sun. It's just darkness. It didn't have nothing to power nothing. No generating of anything. Because light is God. And absent of God means absolutely nothing that has any illumination or anything that will cause any energy to be there it's only punishment torment so hell is not going to be a big party you are being deceived to think that you're going to be having a party forever you have been deceived the devil is a liar and he has been deceiving your mind we need to understand that we need to deliver and even as death will cause a deliverance and Christ's return will cause a deliverance we also need to know that in Jesus we have the promise of deliverance from every evil work so even while we are still here in 2nd Timothy chapter 4 verse 18 and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom that's the word of God today it says and the Lord will deliver me he will deliver you my friend from every evil work did the word of God said some evil work no he said from every evil work it doesn't matter what the magnitude or the place or the origin of the evil work God is going to deliver the Lord is going to deliver you from every evil work and preserve you for his heavenly kingdom to him be glory forever and ever so deliverance we need to understand even as you found yourself as a prisoner today you can stay in that place or you can desire to be set free and if you desire to be set free 
you need to understand that God have always planned. This has been his plan from the very beginning. The word of God in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. And, you know, even as the, you know, the plan of salvation, the plan of deliverance have always been there. But I want you to note something because some people have always been asked questions concerning predestination. Since God knew everything, why God allow it? We know the word of God when it says that having predestinated us, having predestinated us, read it properly, you'll see the word of God says to adoption, predestinated us to the process called adoption. The predestination was that adoption will be something that will be the only answer to be able to rescue humanity. God saw what was going to happen on earth and he put in place the system. He predestined your adoption. The place and the facility for adoption is there, but adoption does not work unlike when a child has to be adopted by somebody somewhere some some parent or another person that come to adopt a child and and you know the government is doing it and it could be an arrangement between parent and parent not so not so with this adoption of your soul this adoption of your soul comes with your agreement yes God already did the work. Christ already paid the price. Everything in the negotiation was done. Satan was the one who had you prisoner. And God did everything that needed to be done to purchase your salvation. But it needs your participation. It needs you to say yes. It needs you to say, I will come. I will obey. I will submit. I will yield myself to you. Oh my God. God is not going to just kick down hell door again the doors were already kicked down the keys was taken away but you know and not you're not just there you're not just there and Christ came to rescue you and he's gonna come and hold your hand and drag you out just as the story of Lot where, where the Word of God says that the angels will will telling Lot come on come on come on you know what is going to happen here Sodom and Gomorrah is going to be destroyed they told him clearly and and he got the information he knew what was happening and it's not like God hid it from him he knew what was happening but the word of God said the angels still had to hold Lot hand and drag him pull him out pull him out and his he, I mean himself and his wife and his two daughters were on the run and since you know you're running from something that is real and I want you to understand it I mean there's too many Christians too many people on our whole not even Christians too many people on our own that has the revelation of the reality of what is to come the eminent destruction that is on its way even the scientists are seeing they are seeing all the projections of death they are seeing all the numbers they punch the numbers in and they're seen they all know that they die but yet still men are still having to be dragged along you still want God to run in and hold your hand to drag you out of that terrible place that is on its way to destruction this was the phenomenon of lot deliverance was available but he still had to be dragged out so much so that even on their way out the angel said don't look back just keep going forward just keep going forward keep running for your life running towards safety running towards that place of deliverance but yet still lot's wife just wanted one more look one more touch one more taste one more memory one more time one more sighting one more experience with the world that is what the sad thing is about the deliverance that Christ had made available for us because his plan was always there 
and you now have one thing to do every single thing that you need concerning life and godliness is made available to you my friend and I want you to hear me well this today I want you to hear me well everything that pertain to life and godliness have already been made available to you but what are you waiting for for God to hold your hand to drag you out of that place to drag you out of adultery drag, drag you out of fornication God have to hold you and drag you out of that place of death oh my come on you have a choice in this matter now and you must say yes you must say yes you must participate you must participate you must submit your will to God it has and was already demonstrated in God's love God offered his son for our sin in first John chapter 4 verse 9 it says in this the love of God was manifested towards us that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him in his in this love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin it's not that we love God and because we love God this thing working out no it's because he loved us he did it deliverance is already made available to you my friend and you have to be able to understand that this is the love that God manifested in Jesus Christ how shall we then respond to such a deliverance should we just continue to be callous and careless should we just continue to be candid should we just continue to be cold oh no we should not be doing that what we should do in fact is that we should glory in God we should not just let's just let this thing run by the word of God asks a question in Hebrews how could they escape if they neglect so great a salvation I am telling you today you're watching this broadcast for a long time you're watching I like this bishop when he talks. But it's not just to like this bishop. It's not just to like the broadcast. It's not just to like the program. It's to face the reality that if you do not accept this wonderful package of salvation, this deliverance that God had provided for you, you shall surely perish. You will die. And it's well deserving. It's not God doing something to you. It's you doing it to yourself. The word of God, Jesus Christ says, and this is the condemnation that light have come into the world and men prefer darkness men love darkness rather than light what a mighty deliverance that we have how should you respond you should accept this gracefully yes deliverance is made available you can be delivered don't just be in despair and think about united nations and all the world save the planet save the world save the globe this world jesus christ said is going to perish did i did you just hear me right don't stop nobody that's telling you save the planet save the earth save the galaxy the, the, it is going to perish because of the evil that man have put and perpetrated on this earth because of the wicked schemes of the devil this world is passing away and what are you to do what are you to do save the world save the world save save the, 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 the fish save the elephant no it's time for you to save your soul get your pla yourself in the right place because this is going to go down don't go down with this ship are you hearing me today you must obey we can only receive this deliverance through obedience to the gospel one man came to jesus by night nicodemus and he said hey how can i receive this deliverance how can i be how can I be saved? How can I receive all that I hear you preaching about? It's sung and good. And Jesus Christ said to him, you must be born again. Every one of you that is watching this broadcast, before we off this air today, I'm saying to every last one of you you will not escape except you are born again and hear me well there is no two ways to do this there are no three ways to do this oh some people say, I heard they made a statement oh God life God is like a big ocean and all the tributaries are running and coming to God hello don't you dare go with that yin and yang story don't you dare go with that all inclusive story about all the religions coming to God every man will come to God every knee small and great will bow before him but only those who have the mark of the blood of the lamb shall be saved only those who have named the name of Christ shall be delivered every other person will perish 
Did you hear what I just said? Don't you dare go with that narrative. It is a lie. It is a lie. It is a lie. It is to carry you straight to hell. It's not the many territories or tributaries coming to God. It's every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. You're not going to escape if you don't obey this gospel. Repent and be baptized every one of you for the remission of sin that's what peter declared on the day of pentecost so even though as we as we we come to a close of this i want to share with you that even though we live in a morally confused and spiritually dark world jesus christ is the one that you can look to and find deliverance you can find deliverance from the guilt of sin you can find deliverance from the power of sin you can have have deliverance from the temptation of sin you can have deliverance from the moral darkness of the world and finally as we conclude you will be delivered from this world that is passing away it is inevitable deliverance has come what are you gonna do would you receive him today in your heart right there in your home I want to encourage you don't put this off don't you dare think that you have tomorrow we're gonna do this next time no Today is the day of salvation. Would you bow your hearts and let's receive him into your life at this very moment. Just pray with me. Say, dear God, I've heard your word and I believe it to be true. I don't want to perish. I don't want to remain in my bondage or my ignorance. I need you. So I ask you right now, come into my heart come and live with me come and reign with me come and help me to overcome all the temptations and the vices of evil in this world that i can reign with you in jesus name i ask you forgiveness and i ask that you receive me in the name of jesus i pray amen today you have prayed that prayer i want to ask you to contact us impact to impact ministries you can call us you can write us or information on the screen. I'm Bishop Sheldon Hola. It has been an honor and a joy to share with you God's wonderful gift of deliverance. We want to remind you, join us in our service. Yes, and if you're here in Tobago, you can join us. Corner Plymouth Road and Union Connector. The churches are open again. Come with your mask. Come prepared to socially distance, but don't stay at home. Come to the house of God, especially if you gave your life to him today. Make sure and come out. Let us get you ready. Have you baptized in water and you can follow the Lord. If you're in Guyana, check out one of our churches in Vizlas or in Yarrow Cabra. Check out our pastor, Pastor Javon Samsudin in Yarrow Cabra or Pastor Sherwin Moore in Vizlas. And you can be blessed there in Guyana. If you're around the world, you can call us or write us our email address on the screen or you can call us. Um, impact to impact ministries at gmail.com or bishop sheldon hola at gmail.com call us write us today let us know that we have touched your life and you are blessed we want to ask you to continue to believe god with us even as we look for a soon and eminent return we want to ask you also if you're watching our broadcast you can help us carry this gospel further even as we get ready we are expanding our common sanctuary it has been a little bit too small for us and we want to ex establish it a little bit more but we want to let you know that we're not building to boast we are building to host so we want to ask you to help us those of you watching you can make your contributions to impact impact ministry or account information is on the screen give us your support let us know that hey we want you to preach this gospel more and more so we want to be putting some things in place in our new facilities to carry the gospel further to the ends of the earth but we want to thank you again for joining us i declare the blessings of god upon you the favor of god upon you his mercy and his grace continues to be upon you even now and forever till next time bishop Paula said we do love you shalom impact to impart we're sending no message coming straight from the heart impact to impart we're giving all sinners a brand new start impact to impart we're sending the message